Tonight at 10, an unprecedented red weather warning is now in force, covering many parts of England. The intense heat wave is affecting most of the UK. The highest temperature of the day was recorded in a village in Suffolk. On the south coast of England, packed beaches, despite warnings to keep out of the sun, and a royal reminder that climate change will lead to more frequent extremes. As I've tried to indicate for quite some time, the climate crisis really is a genuine emergency, and tackling it is utterly essential. The intense heat has caused problems on runways and on railways, but difficulties are even worse in other parts of Europe. Wildfires continue to spread in southern France, as well as in Spain, Portugal and Greece. Up in the woods, you can see guys tackling the fires. There's a huge amount of activity down here and it is hot, it is smoky. Just look at the haze in the trees. Yes, we'll have details from France and, of course, here in the UK, including Flintshire, which recorded the highest ever temperature in Wales. One other main story tonight. The race to be Conservative leader and next Prime Minister is down to four, with Rishi Sunak still in the lead. And coming up in the sport on the BBC News Channel, simply the rest. Ben Stokes will retire from one day international cricket after Tuesday's series opener with South Africa. Welcome to BBC News at 10. The intense heatwave affecting many parts of Britain has triggered an extreme red weather warning for most of England, meaning an actual threat to life. It's putting the NHS under pressure and it's caused disruption for many travellers. The heatwave is due to reach its point of greatest danger tomorrow afternoon. Wales has experienced its hottest ever day and more records are expected to be broken in the next 24 hours. Now, that red weather warning is unprecedented. It covers much of England, uh, including Manchester, London and Leeds. And then we have this amber warning, which applies to the rest of England, all of Wales and then southern Scotland. Temperatures have been recorded in the 30s in all four nations of the UK, much higher than would normally be expected in July. And the village of Santon Downham in Suffolk saw the highest temperature in the UK today at 38.1 degrees Celsius. Let's join our correspondent, Daniela Ralph, for the latest. Well, Hugh, I'm here in central London, where we know it's just after 10 o'clock in the evening, where the sun set around an hour ago, and yet the temperatures here are still at around 31 degrees Celsius. It has been a day of searingly hot weather that has tested the resilience of so many of us. Keeping cool any way possible. Normal, everyday life has had its challenges today. In central London, some still braved an open-top bus tour, while others cope with the intense city heat in a more traditional way. We've had ice pops, we've had ice creams, we've had slushies, we've had smoothies, so a fair few drinks. We've just taken on plenty of water, staying in the shade as much as we can and just making and sure keep the, and having a wee dip <laughs> keeping the fluids up so well, we've got a lot of water inside and i've been giving to them falling on their head you know trying to make sure that they are active to be able to go around in the cities engineers have been fixing the runway at luton airport where heat caused surface damage flights have now resumed after being suspended this afternoon the parched landscapes of southern and eastern england vividly tell the story of this heat wave the ground in Cambridge, dry and brittle, as the weather takes its toll. And these conditions come with risks. A 16-year-old lost his life here on Bray Lake near Maidenhead in Berkshire. He is the fourth person to die in recent days after getting into difficulty in open water. This evening, another teenager is missing in the River Thames at Richmond in Surrey. There's a particular message, particularly for, for, for teenagers, children, some of those who may be tempted to go for a swim. Uh, there's significant dangers of that uh, quite often when people go swimming in rivers uh, when we have very hot weather. For many, today has been about shifting the usual routine. This building site in Dagenham in Essex limited the amount of time teams worked outside. 
over in the Middle East, whether that be Dubai or anyone else, buildings are built. No one stops because of the sun. If anything, we'd rather work in these conditions than when it's raining. And did you ever think of not working today? And we gave the option for people not to work and not to come in this week and next week. And everybody said, no, of course not. The weather's not going to phase us. Building work still has to happen and it's not going to make a difference. So here we are. The Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall experienced the high temperatures on a visit to Cornwall. The Prince used a speech to reinforce his long-term interest in tackling climate change. If I may say so, these commitments around net zero have never been more vitally important as we all swelter under today's alarming <coughs> record temperatures across Britain and Europe. And as I've tried to indicate for quite some time, the climate crisis really is a genuine emergency. Seven o'clock this evening, the seafront in Hove was undergoing its own version of rush hour. Packed beaches taking advantage of some end of day sunshine as we all try to find our own ways of managing in these extreme temperatures. Daniela Ralph, BBC News. As we mentioned, it's the first time that the Met Office has issued a red warning since the system was introduced last year. It means that widespread impacts on people and infrastructure are expected with substantial changes in working practices and daily routines. Now, among the places badly affected were schools and care homes and zoos. As our North of England correspondent Danny Savage reports now from Doncaster. Right, year four, it is our first break time of the day. We are going to go outside and enjoy... At this primary school in Doncaster, things were looking up for year four this morning. Much needed ice pops. An early break outside, but with some restrictions. On the parched grass, they had to stay in the shade. No running around. I understand it. If we're running around in the sun, then we might actually get poorly and we might get sunburnt and it might hurt us. You can tell there's been a lack of rain. <laughs> um, at lunchtime, we're going to keep the children in all together because obviously it's midday, it, the sun's at its hottest and we think it's safer for them just to stay inside at that point. But it's quite nice getting out for some outdoor learning as well this morning in the shade. <laughs> at Thornhill House Care Home okay. near Barnsley, yeah. they were doing everything they could to keep the residents cool and safe. There were drinks everywhere, along with more ice lollies and salad on the menu rather than cooked meals. The residents have said they want more salads and things like that over the next day or two. Is that a good thing, working in a kitchen, a bit less heat? Well, yeah, because you've not got to have cooker on <laughs> in the, the, these degrees. So, yeah, that's good that they want salad, yeah. Healthy as well. But yeah. convincing the elderly to stay indoors isn't always easy. Some of them can be quite stubborn, but... In the end, like, they know we're doing it for what's best for them and they do listen, they're good. Bless them. <laughs> By lunchtime, Doncaster was one of the hottest places in the north of England. The local wildlife park had closed to all visitors so they could concentrate on animal welfare, like chucking ice cubes to the polar bears. The, the bears, they're sort of like primary concern in this heat. You know, want to make sure that everyone's as safe as possible and the decision was for the safety of, of the workers here today, the public and, you know, our animals, um, we want to make sure everyone's staying safe. As the heat built, trains were ordered to go slow, 20 miles per hour in places in Yorkshire. This is the East Coast main line at Doncaster and this train is heading north to Inverness, already running about an hour late because of speed restrictions. And tomorrow, with the temperatures forecast to be even hotter, LNER are running no services on the East Coast main line, south of Leeds and York. Other operators, including Lumo and Grand Central, will also not be operating services on the line south of Newcastle tomorrow. There's already been a record number of wildfires in England and Wales this summer. This one near Wakefield added to the total this afternoon. Danny Savage, BBC News, Doncaster. Well, the overwhelming consensus among scientists is that climate change is increasing the likelihood of exceptional heat waves in Britain, where people, of course, are not used to such high temperatures. And weather experts say that the heat waves are becoming more intense, more frequent, and the temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius are now far more likely in the UK. Our climate editor, Justin Rowlett, is with me in the studio to explain more. Justin? Thanks, Hugh. 
Well, first off, as much of the country endures these record temperatures, the obvious question is, why is it so hot? And that is simple. Southerly winds are bringing hot air up from Africa, which is helping drive the brutal heat waves that Spain, Portugal and France have been enduring. Now, those same southerly winds have brought that blistering heat here to the UK. What makes it worse is a weather system called a heat dome. It sits like a lid on a pot over Europe, as you can see. The sun heats the air, but it remains stuck within the dome. So look at that, it's pushed back down to the parched air, raising temperatures higher and higher. We're not ruling out um, further heat waves. Continental Europe is very hot at the moment, and the Northern Hemisphere is really hot. There's heat waves in the United States, heat waves in China, um, and it's certainly looking like this summer's gonna be uh, much warmer and we're going to see a lot less precipitation than we usually see. How does this compare with the past? 1976 is perhaps the UK's most famous heat wave. Temperatures hit almost 36 degrees, so lower than today, but the hot weather went on for days and days. And extreme heat is getting more common. Of the top ten hottest days since the Victorian era when records began, seven are in the last 20 years. And remember, this is all happening at just over one degree of global warming. So what about the future? Well, first off, we don't yet know what this summer still has in store for us. The Met Office says it hasn't ruled out the possibility of more heat waves this year. But climate scientists say we can certainly expect more heat waves in the years to come. Here is how hot the Earth is now, a little more than one degree over what it was before the industrial era began and we began starting burning all these fossil fuels. The pink blush there shows the hottest areas. Look particularly how the Arctic is heating up. As the ice melts, it exposes the dark sea, which then absorbs even more heat. Now this is what the world would look like at two degrees of warming. The Arctic is way hotter now. Look at that. Uh, at the moment, the world is on track to get a little bit hotter than this if countries, if countries stick to the commitments they've made to cutting emissions. And what happens if they don't stick to their carbon cutting promises? Well, if the world does nothing at all, the worst case scenario, this is how things would look. Temperatures are now four degrees above pre-industrial levels. And look how much of the whole world is now significantly hotter. And that is why cutting greenhouse gases is so important. That's how we're going to keep the number and the intensity of future heat waves to a minimum. Hugh. Justin, many thanks again. Justin Rolat, our climate editor with the, his analysis there. Well, health officials say that the heat has put extra pressure on hospitals, but so far they're just about coping. Uh, in older hospitals, well, they've taken the decision to cancel routine outpatient appointments and non-urgent surgeries because of the very high temperatures in some of the operating theatres. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, has spent the day at one hospital in South London. A memorable day for Cade and Cavorm, and not just because baby daughter Adea had arrived. Born this morning in a heat wave, they'd brought in their own fans to try to keep cool. I had my mum fanning me with a handheld fan. I had my husband holding the fan right up to my face because I was sweating as I was pushing. So it's, it's a lot of adjustments we've had to make, but <laughs> we've made it. It's giving the Fantastic. Water. And we're going to go in the ward now, aren't we, with it? And Here at St Helia Hospital, extra drinks for patients to keep them hydrated were being delivered. Dahlia was one who was relieved to have a regular supply brought to her bed. There's always cold water for it, and they put ice cubes in there. When they, they change it and put ice cubes in, lollies, ice creams. But dealing with the heat is very difficult. The buildings predate the start of the NHS in 1948. There's no air conditioning. As we're standing here now, this actual prefab building, it's a bit like a greenhouse. So it's additional temperatures, despite all of the windows and us trying to do everything in our power to reduce the temperature. Staff needs to be continuously hydrated. Our patients have to be hydrated. So tiring very, very easily in these extreme temperatures. It's the middle of the day and it's already 30 degrees here in A&E. The heat has added to the extreme pressure seen in units like this and increased the strain on staff. 
Hi. So another busy day. Yeah. Doctors here are concerned that based on previous experience, a heat wave can store up problems which last more than a few days. The impact of heat on long-term conditions lasts for many days, even when the temperature has dropped. So we're anticipating an increased number of admissions and attendances today, but we will continue to see the impact on our services of this heat wave for 10 to 14 days uh, forward. Just get in some for the sixth floor renal department. Ice lollies were free for staff at the hospital and some were also taking them up for patients. They're complaining a lot that it's very hot and stuff. The windows aren't fully open, but ice lollies will treat them. NHS England said almost all services had continued to run, but they know that tomorrow will bring more heat and further challenges and pressures. Hugh Pym, BBC News at St Helier Hospital, South London. Well, the extreme heat has certainly caused plenty of problems for travellers. Luton Airport suspended all flights this afternoon because of what it described as a surface defect on its single runway. We saw a bit of a reference to that earlier. And elsewhere, train services were cancelled and speed restrictions led to longer journeys. But many people seem to have listened to warnings not to travel unless it's essential. So let's bring of all, all of that together. Talk to our transport correspondent, Katie Austin, who's at London's King's Cross station tonight. Um, Katie, just, just summarise for us, if you like, what the problems have been today. Well, train companies have been running reduced timetables today and there have been plenty of delays and cancellations as the extreme heat has caused disruption on the rail network. The infrastructure just isn't really designed for these kind of temperatures. And although there have been speed restrictions in place to try and reduce the risk of problems, there have been a number of incidents where track has buckled and overhead lines have failed. Now, a lot of people did heed the advice not to travel by train unless strictly necessary, but some train towards the coast were packed and Network Rail is telling people don't go to the seaside by train tomorrow. Uh, a little bit more about the advice then, Katie, if I can. You mentioned that piece of advice there, but what else are people being told about the days ahead? Well, again, there will be a reduced timetable in place tomorrow. So, it, again, it's a case of don't travel unless absolutely necessary. But uh, there will be no trains at all running from, London's King, from London King's Cross up on the East Coast Main Line up to, to York and to Leeds. And this evening, a number of train companies running services on other routes where services go into the areas predicted to be the hottest tomorrow. The red Well, I'm sorry about that. We obviously had a bit of a glitch on the uh, on the link to Katie there, but we got the message, which is that people are being advised not to travel really unless it's necessary. And uh, Katie there telling us about the problems, especially out of places like Kings Cross on that uh, East Coast Main Line. Um, so beware of that. If you're planning to travel for whatever reason, uh, clearly there'll be quite a lot of uh, problems on the way. Now, let's uh, move on to some of the problems in other parts of the world, especially in other parts of Europe, which are experiencing an even bigger heat wave uh, with extreme temperatures and wildfires in Spain and Portugal and Greece, forcing thousands of people to flee their homes. In France, officials say the country is experiencing an apocalypse of heat as large wildfires burn in the southwest of the country. Our Europe correspondent, Jessica Parker, has the latest. <laughs> into the forest and the front line of an exhausting battle. And one that today we were given special access to. Up in the woods you can see guys tackling the fires. There's a huge amount of activity down here and it is hot, it is smoky. Just look at the haze in the trees. The smoke thickens the further in we go. The flames suddenly all too apparent. The fire rekindles in many places. We have to be very careful with these conditions. We're in a pine forest. The vegetation is so dry here, and with the temperatures, the fire reaches the top of the trees very quickly. Flames reach up to 80 meters high. Along here, we were due to reach an evacuated campsite by the coast, but we never got there. Things were getting worse. You could see it on the ground and in the sky.
water bombers, one after the other, flying over our heads. They never stop here, they can't, but soon we, along with others, are told it's time to leave. Back on the main road, the thousands of evacuations were plain to see. Smoke means for many, it's just not safe to stay. Here at this centre, you can at least take a moment. Cool down. It was very smoky this morning. It's very bad for the lungs. I knew there were problems coming, so I prepared a grab bag. Even the medications for my dogs were ready to go. For some, it's a matter of frantic phone calls to find a place to sleep tonight. Who knows when they'll get to go home. It can be in a few days, it can be in a few weeks. It's very difficult now, now to say, but we'll try to make people come back to their house uh, as, uh, as soon as possible. France's wildfires seen from above are an alarming sight. Winds and over 40 degree heat made for a destructive mix today. Temperatures are set to drop tomorrow, and for these men, that can't come soon enough. Jessica Parker, BBC News, in Gironde. So how do things look tonight in uh, southwestern France, which is very badly affected? We're going to go to the town of Londiras, which is in the southwest, and uh, Lucy Williamson, my colleague, is there. Lucy, what can you tell us? Well, it's been a day of extraordinary temperatures here. A dozen records broken all along this western coast of France, and that hasn't made the job of firefighters here any easier. They're now tackling blazes in two broad areas. You saw one of them in Jess's report. This is the other one near the village of Londiras. We've just been down the road just before I came to speak to you, and the fire trucks are out there tonight, still trying to tackle those blazes and get them under control. A total of uh, just over 30,000 people have now been evacuated from these two areas. More than 16,000 hectares of land have been destroyed. And this afternoon we got news of a third blaze beginning in an area south of here. That meant that resources had to be diverted to try and stamp that fire out before it too got out of control. And as Jess was saying there, temperatures are due to drop here tomorrow, but because the conditions are so dry and the winds are so changeable, fire chiefs are saying that may not bring immediate relief and they could well be here this time tomorrow night still trying to get these fires under control. All right, Lucy, many thanks again. Lucy Williamson in Londres in uh, southwestern France. And um, by the way, plenty of information uh, on the heatwave on BBC News Online, including the latest travel advice, that's essential, um, how hot it is where you are if you want to see some of the statistics and some tips as well from medical experts on trying to stay cool in the weather. Head to bbc.co.uk forward slash news or use the BBC News app. Right, let's move on to the day's other main story. In the latest round of the contest for the Conservative leadership, the former soldier Tom Tugendhat has been knocked out, leaving four candidates to succeed Boris Johnson. Now, Rishi Sunak, the former Chancellor, led the pack again, and he took 115 votes there. Penny Mordaunt was second with 82. Foreign Secretary Liz Trust there on, on the right with 71. Kami Bajanok on 58. And there's Mr Tugendhat on 31. He was last, so he now disappears from the race. And over the next few days, uh, the four will be reduced to just two, the final two. Uh, and then it'll be Conservative Party members who will vote on the winner. And the result will be announced on September the 5th. Our political editor, Chris Mason, has the latest. Hubbub in a heat wave, democracy of sorts at dusk. I have the results of the third ballot. Uh, Round three of Conservative MPs deciding who they want and who they don't want to be our next Prime Minister. Tom Tugendhat is eliminated from the election. The other candidates are able to go forward to a fourth ballot, which will take place tomorrow. Another defeated candidate, but this time not one willing to endorse anyone else, at least yet. Well, thank you very much. That is the end of the road for me for this race. But look, it has been an amazing run. I'm incredibly proud of the team. I'm incredibly grateful to all the supporters who've been with me. The former Chancellor Rishi Sunak is still the frontrunner, nearly doubling his lead over second place Penny Mordaunt, who actually lost a vote compared with round two. Good morning. The Foreign Secretary Liz Truss finished third again, narrowing the gap to Penny Mordaunt. 
Morning. And here's who finished fourth, Kemi Badenoch, on her way this morning to try to drum up more support. I'm going to be fighting hard for every single vote um, and I'm not taking anything for granted, but I'm optimistic. Thank you. While Tory MPs voted upstairs, downstairs in the Commons chamber, the start of Boris Johnson's parliamentary swan song, defeated but demob happy, pointing out he crushed Labour. We sent the great blue Tory ferret so far up their left trouser leg they couldn't move. We won the biggest Conservative victory since 1987, the biggest share of the vote since 1979. We won seats they never dreamed of losing. Despite knowing that he'd been fired from job after job for lying, they elected him to lead their party. And he behaved exactly as everyone feared when he got into Downing Street. He lurched from one scandal to the next. Let's reflect on a man who should never have been put in office in the first place. A man that simply shouldn't be here for a minute longer because he demonstrated no dignity in office, in the highest office in the land. And incidentally, what does an outgoing Prime Minister ejected by his own side do while waiting for his replacement? Well, he appears to be enjoying some of the perks of high office, filming himself here as a passenger in a warplane being refuelled mid-air. The leadership race, yes, is something of a long haul too. It'll be seven weeks until we find out who Boris Johnson's successor is. And incidentally, once we get to that final two, Hugh, over the summer, I do expect there will be questions about the extreme weather and indeed about climate change. There's one thing we can say for certain tonight. We've been in something of a habit in this country over the centuries, with a few exceptions, of getting white men to run the place. This time round, that isn't going to happen. Chris, many thanks again. Chris Mason there with the latest thoughts at Westminster, our political editor. Let's have a look then at some of the other stories uh, making the news today. Uh, the Conservative Police and Crime Commissioner for Nottinghamshire has been banned from driving after she was caught speeding five times in 12 weeks. Caroline Henry was disqualified for six months and fined £2,500. The price of petrol has fallen from the record highs at the start of the month, according to the AA Motoring Group. Average pump prices are down to 188.76p per litre for petrol, 196.96p per litre for diesel. The AA said that falling wholesale costs would lead to average savings of £10 on a full tank within a fortnight. Emergency services are dealing with a major blaze at a chemicals factory in Cheshire. Uh, ten fire engines were sent to Middlewich at around 8.30 this evening. People nearby are being told to keep their doors and windows closed and the public are being asked to stay away. Football's governing body is to trial a ban on heading the ball with a view to removing it from the game for children under 12 in England. Uh, the Football Association says it will apply for a law change from the 2023-24 season if the trial is successful. Let's have more then on the main story, which is of course the heat wave, and Wales in particular, which has recorded its hottest day ever. Uh, the temperature reached 37.1 Celsius in the village of Penarlag or Hawarden in Flintshire. And the heat is a particular challenge for farmers trying to keep their livestock cool, as our correspondent uh, Howell Griffith reports now. If you're feeling hot and bothered, spare a thought for Cynic Duberth, a Highland cow far from home at the Royal Welsh Show. Chloe's hoping she can keep her cool for the competition. They're coping all right at the minute, touch wood. I mean, hopefully it just stays like this. There's a nice breeze coming through now, but fingers crossed, it all goes well. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. This is Britain's biggest agricultural show, the first in three years due to the pandemic. Roasting heat wasn't going to stop them. We've uh, never actually got to the point where we would have cancelled the show. If that point would have come, we would have taken it seriously, but we were con confident that we've got sufficient mitigations in place, working with our natural resources on site, lots of trees, lots of buildings. Morgan's trying to keep his animals as happy as well. Pigs in muck. They can't sweat, so it would normally be wallowing in mud. The animals are a little bit stressed, they? they are a little bit. They're a little bit, you can tell by the way they're panting and the way they're constantly 
getting up, sitting back down, getting up, sitting back down, trying to roll and stuff. They are a little bit distressed by the heat. It's just gone three o'clock in the afternoon, the hottest part of the day, and there's no escaping the warmth. But what you also notice is it feels quite quiet. Normally, there'd be thousands more visitors, but it feels like some people have stayed away to avoid the heat. Staying in the shade seems to have been the solution. The new fans in the sheep sheds help too. It's just too hot. Um, but it's not so bad. Like, they've put the new fans in, and there is a breeze, but it's just, just not quite enough. After a day of record temperatures in Wales, tomorrow should bring cooler, if not quite balmy weather. And for Chloe, at least the heat of the contest ended with a win. Howell Griffith, BBC News, Llanel. So having seen that with uh, Howell there, it's 10.30 uh, exactly. And of course, we all want to know what's likely tomorrow and in the next few days with the weather. So it's overdue, Ben. Thank you very much, Hugh. A good evening. What an extraordinarily hot day it has been. And uh, what's really been extraordinary is how widespread that heat has been. 38.2 degrees, the temperature at Santon Downham in Suffolk, close to the all-time UK record. But Jersey set a new record today. Wales provisionally had its hottest day on record. And tomorrow, for some is set to be even hotter. So we still have this red warning of extreme heat from the Met Office. And if you're hoping to cool down overnight tonight, well, I don't think the temperatures are going to help you very much because right now out there, if you are heading to bed in the capital, 30 degrees, 22 for Belfast, 27 degrees there in Cardiff. And watch this map. Normally through the night, we'd expect the orange colours to drain away. They don't really. It is going to be exceptionally warm even as we start tomorrow morning. Those are the starting temperatures. And the reason for that is that overhead will actually be the warmest air mass of this heat wave. So we'll have some exceptionally hot air right on top of the UK, first thing. Frontal systems trying to push in from the west, trying to change things. So it's where we hold on to sunshine and where we hold on to that hot air that we have the potential for some really high temperatures tomorrow, particularly in eastern parts. Out towards the west, western Scotland could see some rain here later. Northern Ireland, a band of showers and thunderstorms potentially pushing across Wales and southwest England. So for some western areas, Belfast, Plymouth, it will be a cooler day tomorrow. Further east, well up into the 30s, the high 30s. And this is a chart I didn't really ever expect to be showing you because parts of the East Midlands, Yorkshire, Lincolnshire, potentially up to 41 or 42 degrees tomorrow afternoon, which would obviously be unprecedented. Now, as we go through Tuesday night, we will see some scattered showers and thunderstorms here and there. Another very warm night in eastern parts, but it will start to turn fresher from the west. And that's our story for the rest of the week. It is going to turn cooler. Temperatures lower than they have been back closer to where they should be. Some sunshine, a bit of rain at times, but still some heat to come first. Hugh. People need to take care, Ben. They do. Yeah. Thanks very much. Ben Rich there with the latest on the weather. Uh, that's BBC News at 10 on Monday the 18th of July. More analysis of the day's main stories, of course, on Newsnight. And that's uh, just getting underway. And Kirsty is, in fact, on air right now on BBC Two. And the news on BBC One, of course, continues with uh, my colleagues in the uh, nations and regions of the UK. And they're there standing by with the news uh, where you are. But from all of the 10 o'clock team, thanks for watching and good night.